guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you part three of what I read in May. I have two books to talk about, so let's just get right into it. First book I want to mention is When Books Went to War, The Stories That Helped Us Win World War II by Mer Mary, by Molly Guptill Manny. And this is a nonfiction book, and it details how in this, during World War II, um, the book lovers of America decided that they needed to get books to the troops. And they first started to do that by having a book campaign, a victory book drive, where they gathered up all these books. And what most, like many donation drives, a lot of the books they got were um, not that great or not good for service people. And so they decided instead that the armed services, like the Army and the Navy, were going to uh, what's the word, fund the publication of special editions called the Armed Services Editions, which were really compact um, books that you could fit into a, a uniform pocket. And it just talks about how, you know, the war with Germany was not just a physical war, but it was a war of ideas. And so, you know, in Germany, you had book banning and you had book burnings and you had authors who felt like they had to flee the country to, to make sure, you know, they didn't get arrested for, you know, being enemies of the state. And then you compare this to America where they were sending millions and millions of books to the troops across the way, you know, to give them entertainment, but also to expand their mind. And I just found this book so fascinating. And I am working at a library and I'm finishing up my degree in library science. And so this book has like all of the librarian uh, beliefs, all of our values, you know, access to all and not having censorship and, you know, the freedom of choice. And just like everything a librarian it stands for is in this book and of course like when they were doing the victory book drive they hired a librarian from the los angeles public library to be in charge of it and she was in charge of it until they decided to start doing these armed services editions but anyway it just shows the powers of the power of librarians and the power of libraries and just so many great values that i hold very dearly and that i wish were held more dearly by america today by our government today um I don't want to get political though. So anyway, I just found it so fascinating and it's such a great piece of history that I'd never heard of before until I read about this book. I can't remember where I heard about this book, but I know Kathleen from Kathleen Ann has read this book and she did a really great review. I'll link it down below, but she had, she actually bought an Armed Service edition and showed it in her review and it was so cool. And that book, this book had already been on my TBR before that video, but that video just made me like really want to read it. So I finally picked it up and I actually started this on ebook. And then once I realized how much I loved it, I had to get my own copy. So I bought this. And yeah, it's just a really great. And so you can see on the back, here are the Armed Service Editions and what they look like. They have the the um, cover of the real book on in smaller print. Here, let me get closer. And then, it's yeah, so anyway, it's just really cool. And this book, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, was apparently like a really big favorite of the Armed service troops that got these books and Br Betty Smith, the writer of that book, got like so many fan mail letters and she, they published some of them in this book and it's just really fascinating how men who like had not read a book since like middle school were telling her how they like adored her book and how they would fight over it and how they would trade cigarettes for the privilege for being the first person to read her book when it came to their um, camp and it's just really fascinating and this book is so good y'all like I highly encourage any lover of books and any librarian to read this and I just adore it and I would definitely read it again. I gave it four stars because sometimes the writing was a little repetitive and she did um, seem to say the same thing again and again but on the whole a really great reading experience and a really great book that I would highly recommend. Yeah it was just a great great book. Loved it. This book I want to ta talk about is Assassination Vacation by Sarah Val. This is a book that is detailed the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and William McKinley and James Garfield. It does not talk about the Kennedy assassination very much at all, probably because um, the Kennedy assassination is so well known and so well talked about. And Sarah Val is a journalist and she's really interested in presidential history, particularly um, 
assassinations, and specifically the Lincoln assassination. She calls herself a believer in history instead of religion. She talks about how she doesn't really um, believe in God or, you know, anything like that, but she believes in history, and she sort of considers Abraham Lincoln to be her patron saint. And because of that, she decides to go on this, like, journey to see all of the, um, sites associated with Lincoln's assassination, as well as McKinley and Garfield. And it's a really interesting book. Um, she goes to places like, she goes up to the upstate New York to see the um, Onida, I believe that's how you say it, the Onida cult, because the guy who shot um, Garfield, or was it Garfield? Was it Garfield? I think it was Garfield. She, he, his name was Charles to go, and um, he was right, he lived there for a long time, and so she goes up there, and she goes, of course, to, like, the Lincoln Memorial several times, and she goes to the place where Lincoln was shot, Ford's Theater, and she goes to the place where McKinley was shot, and the place where James Garfield was shot, and then she goes to see, um, the prison where Dr. Mudd, who was the guy who helped John Wilkes Booth set his leg after he broke it, she goes to the pr prison in Florida where he was in prison, and so she just basically takes you around to all of these sites where things that are tangibly related to one of these presidential assassinations. And I enjoyed the history part of this, but I found her personal commentary to be kind of annoying because, okay, this book is published in 2005, and she talks a lot about um, President Bush and how she doesn't like President George W. Bush, and how she doesn't like his policies, you know, because in 2005, we, we had just gotten into the Iraq War and done things like that, and so she spends a lot of time talking about that, and she even, in the introduction, talked about how she can sort of relate to the assassins of these presidents, because she kind of wants to assassinate George W. Bush, and it's like, what? You kind of, like, okay, I don't know, I don't think that was a very good thing to say at all, and then, you know, like I said, she doesn't really believe in religion or God, and so she's sort of negative about, negative about churches whenever she visits the church. And it's kind of like, okay, is that really necessary? And she also, she, this is before the word privilege was sort of like a buzzword, but she talks a lot about how she doesn't like, like, privilege things. And, like, for example, she goes to Grand Mercy Park in New York City, and Grand Mercy Park is a private park where you have to live in the area to be able to get in there. You have to have a key, or you have to be a guest at the hotel across the street, and that's the only way you can get in. And she goes on and on about how she hates the fact that you can't get in without a key. And But she has, like, these friends that are rich enough to stay at this hotel, and they, one of them takes her over there. And I'm like, normal people would not have wealthy friends who can take them into this park. And it's just like, and also, a lot of the places she goes, she gets, like, private tours because she's a journalist and because she's writing a book. And I'm like, you're complaining about privilege, but clearly you get privilege all the time throughout this book because you, I'm just like, what? What? And then, like, okay, she doesn't drive because she's scared of driving or she has a fear of it or something. But she has, like, all these friends who are willing to take her anywhere she wants to go. And she's like, it's like most people who don't drive, they can't afford a car. And she can clearly afford a car, and she has the choice to not be able to drive. And it's just like, I don't know, it just bothered me. Her whole, her whole tone in the book was kind of whiny, and I didn't, I didn't enjoy that part. So I enjoyed the history of this book, but I did not enjoy the, like, like I said, the commentary on it. I only gave this three stars. Um, I might try another one of her books, though. Like, I know she has one about Lafayette that I wouldn't mind trying someday. But yeah, on the whole, her the, her tone sort of bothered me in this book, and it sort of struck me as being whiny, as I said. But anyway, overall, a three-star read. So that's all I got for you today. I hope everybody's having a great day, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!